Hello, welcome to this video. My name is Sri. In this video, I am going to talk about AWS ENI. ENI stands for Elastic Network Interface. So for any server, being it a Linux or Windows, you need an ENI attached to your EC2 instance to be able to access in network. So without ENI attached to the EC2 instance, you cannot access that instance. So I'm going to talk about ENI, how to attach and detach and various operations that can be performed with ENI attached to EC2 instance. So basically, first I'm going to create an EC2 instance and I will show you the attached ENI and all its details. And then I will create a new ENI, which is altogether a different uh, ENI in a different AG, uh, AG availability zone and I will check if I can attach this ENI to the EC2 instance that is created earlier. And then I will create another ENI in the same AG as the EC2 instance and try to attach that ENI to the EC2 instance. And I will show you different operations that we can perform on ENI. And finally, I will delete EC2 instance and see if that deletes my ENI or my ENI still stands even if the EC2 instance is up deleted. Okay, so these are the various tasks I'm going to show you in this demo. So let's go one by one and see. So I'm going to switch to my console. So this is my AWS console and I'm going to create an EC2 instance. choosing Amazon AMI, T2 micro, I'll keep all other default values, storage same, no, ta no tags, security group, I'm going to assign the existing security group which has port 22 open, though I'm not accessing this server, just it is a security group that I'm assigning to my EC2. Launch, I'm going to use my existing key pair. Okay, now if you go to the EC2 instance, so this is the pending. Okay, now my EC2 instance is uh, about to provision. Okay, so if you come down a little bit in the networking tab, you will see all the details related to the networking for that EC2 instance. Okay, you can see the private IP assigned to this instance. You can also see the uh, public IP assigned to this instance and also the DNS entries for this EC2 instance. Okay, so let me refresh if my instance is up and running. So my instance is up and running now and if you come down a little bit, you will see a network interface ID. So this is the ENI that I am talking about. So this ENI has got uh, the public IP, public IP, private IP and also the various other details. So let me choose this ENI and show you the details that we have. So now I am on the home page of ENI. This is my ENI attached to the EC2 instance. So if you see various details here, the, e, the ENI has got uh, the private IP and it also has a public IP. And you can also see that this EC ENI is now attached to an EC2 instance and that is shown by this parameter and you can also see the instance that is attached uh, th that this is ENI is attached to. Okay, So this is the instance to which this ENI is attached to. Okay, Now everything looks good. Now let's also make a note of the uh, subnet ID shown here and also the availability zone. If you see here, my instance is now created in the availability zone US East 1D. Okay, so I'm copying that value, but I will show you why I'm copying this value. Okay, now this is uh, the details of uh, ENI that is attached to my EC2 instance. Now at this point, I'm going to create a new ENI. Okay, so if you click on this ENI, so it will allow me to create a new ENI instance. Okay, so the description will be second ENI and subnet 
I'm pasting the subnet that I copied from my previous CNI. But for you to show something, I'm not choosing this subnet, but I will choose a different subnet and see if I can attach this ENI. So let me delete this and let me choose something, a different subnet and attach the security group here. Okay. Now the key thing that you need to remember is I am creating this ENI in a different subnet and this subnet is in a different availability zone. Okay. Now let me create this. Okay. So if you see here, this is uh, my second uh, ENI that is created manually. Okay. So this ENI is uh, now created. Now if you see the details here, this is created in this US East 1E availability zone. Okay. Now if you see it is not attached to any EC2 instance, so all the details are empty. And for this ENI, there is only one private IP that is assigned. Okay. Now, at this point of time, I am trying to assign this ENI or I will say attach this ENI to an EC2 instance. Let me see if I can assign. If you right click this ENI and say attach, okay, it says no instances were found for this VPC. So that means the ENI where I have created this ENI that does not have any EC2 instances. Okay, but my EC2 instance is in a different subnet, so it is not allowing me to assign or attach this ENI to my EC2 instance. Okay, so what I have to do is I am going to delete this. So the reason that I am not able to assign is this is in a different availability zone. Okay, now let me delete this. Okay, so I have deleted this ENI. Now I am going to create a new ENI, but before I create, let me again copy this and this time I am going to create second ENI and I am going to choose the same subnet or the same availability zone where my EC2 instance is up and running. Okay, so I am choosing this and I choose the same security domain, security group and then create. Okay, so now my second ENI is now being provisioned and this time it is provisioned in the same availability zone where my EC2 instance is up and running. Okay. Now if you see, if I refresh for this ENI because it is created manually, it is not attached to any instance. If you see all the details here, they are all empty. Now I am going to attach the same ENI to an EC2 instance that is up and running. Now if you select the attach option it is now showing me the instance that is up and running in this availability zone. Okay, So this is the instance that is up and running. Now I am going to select this instance attach. Okay, So at this point of time the ENI is about to attach to the EC2 instance in the same availability domain. Okay, Now let me refresh. Okay. So if you see the second ENI which is uh, created now by manually, now it has the instance attached, EC2 instance attached. Now the instance ID is also specified here. Now if you see here, it has the private IP address. Okay. Now it does not have the public IP and I will show you shortly how you can assign the public IP to this ENI as well. Okay. Now, what we have done is we have created a different ENI and attached it to the EC2 instance. Now let me go to the EC2 instance. Okay, this this is my EC2 instance up and running. And into the network settings, if I scroll down a little bit, now you can see here the two ENIs attached to this EC2 instance. The first one is uh, already there as part of EC2 and the second one which we created manually and attached to the EC2 instance. Okay. Now at this point of time, I am going to show you the different activities that we can perform on ENI. 
okay now if you scroll down here either you can choose one of this eni that will take you to the eni home page or you can come to the section network section and choose the network interface okay so that will take you to the place where the eni resources are available okay so these two are my eni resources now what i'm trying to do is if you click right click uh, it will show you various options that you can perform on each eni okay now as you know the eni that is highlighted here it is my primary eni attached to ec2 instance now i'm trying to detach this eni from the ec2 instance let's see if that is available i click this and the action that you see the attach detach and delete all these options are disabled that means any primary eni attached to the ec2 instance you cannot do the operations mentioned uh, disabled here okay now let me select the second eni and let me see if i can do the same operations on the second eni okay so on the second eni because my eni is already attached to the ec2 instance so it is disabled now and also because it is already attached to the ec2 instance the delete option is disabled okay so at this point of time i can disable i can detach this ec2 eni from my ec2 instance so let me choose detach either you can choose force detach or you can without detach okay now the eni will be detached from the ec2 instance okay let me see okay now if you see here the option it is not attached the details are empty and also there is no instance id information that confirms that this is eni is detached from the ec2 instance now let me see if the other two options are highlighted now at this point of time you can again reattach to this this eni to the same ec2 instance or if you have a different ec2 instance you might be having a different uh, uh, ec2 instances up and running in your corporate so you can assign this eni to those ec2 instances okay so what i'm trying to say here is the secondary eni that is created now that can be attached and detached to any ec2 instance defined in the same availability zone okay now i can also choose the option delete which deletes this eni because it is not associated to ec2 okay but i'm not deleting it now now there are various other options specified here so they some of the options are self explanatory i'm not uh, talking about it but let me see if we can talk about manage ip addresses so if i choose the option manage ip address here it will allow me to assign an elastic ip address so if i have a defined elastic ip address which is a public ip in my account i can assign that public ip address to this eni so that i can access the ec2 instance using this public ip in the internet okay or i can reassign a new ip for this ec2 instance for this eni if it is assigned to ec2 instance okay so like that there are various options that you can perform on manage ip address okay the uh, associate address okay so at this point of time if you specify the associate ip so you can if you have multiple ip private ip address you can associate it with uh, a different ip address okay and then if you did not select a proper security group while defining the eni this is the place where you can define or you can assign multiple security groups to this eni okay so the security group stands for the firewall at the network layer which allows connections to the uh, ec2 instance if this is attached to an ec2 instance okay so like guys you can select multiple security groups okay i'm not selecting okay if you want to edit any tags or attach any tags you can define the tags here okay so these are the various options that you can perform on the uh, eni okay now let me also show you another thing i 
I wanted to show you something. Just give me a minute. Okay. So I want to talk about this option change uh, termination behavior. This is disabled because it is not attached. Now let me attach this ENI again back to the same EC2 instance. Okay. I want to show that option how it works. Okay. Now the ENI is again attached to the EC2 instance. It is attached to this EC2 instance and if you go to this EC2 instance, the networking, let me refresh. Okay, so these two EC2 ENIs are attached to this EC2 instance. Now, let me go back to the ENI part and on the secondary instance, okay, right click and if you see here this option change termination behavior, okay. So if I select this option, it will ask me, do you want this ENI to be terminated along with the EC2 instance, okay. What does it mean? When, whenever you terminate any EC2 instance, it actually deletes the primary ENI attached to the EC2 instance. So if you select this option because it is a secondary ENI that is created by you manually and attached to the EC2 instance, you can control whether this ENI should be deleted as part of the EC2 instance termination. Okay. So now I'm going to select this option. That means the ENI is attached to the EC2 instance. Now, if I terminate my EC2 instance, it should terminate my ENIs as well, including the secondary ENI that I attached to EC2. Okay. Now, I selected that option. Now, let me go back to the instance, EC2 instance, and let me terminate my EC2 instance. Okay, so I terminated. Now it is in the process of shutting down. If you go back to the interface, they are still up. They are still there. Okay, so when it is in the process of termination, the process the ENIs will be still there. Okay, so this is the easy to instance. Now it is still shutting down. So let's wait for the state to change to termination okay so now ec2 instance is terminated let me go back to the let me show you here the networking if you see here there are no enis attached to this ec2 instance and let me go back to the network interfaces and if you see there are no enis available in my console okay so that means we have perform various activities on ENI. Now before you leave, I have a question here. Now when you create a different ENI and attach to the EC2 instance, you are getting multiple interfaces to connect to the e EC2 instance. Now my question is, why do we need multiple ENIs? Is it really required or we just mentioned it for the demo sake? Okay. If you think we need a multiple ENI for a server, uh, what are the use cases? And if you know the answers, please post them in the comments. I will respond. Okay. So my question is, why do we need multiple ENIs for an EC2 instance? Okay. So uh, thanks for watching this video. And if you like this video, please subscribe my channel for various other videos of notification. And uh, thank you for having your time here.